Let's have a look at what we've got over here because we are now finally bringing angles to a conclusion, okay? We've done a lot of different kinds of relationships there, angles at a point, angles on a straight line, and all these parallel bits. I want us to um, review and think about all of these in the summary, okay? If lines are parallel then, we have these three different paired relationships that we've learnt the names of, right? And we've talked about some of today. What's the first kind of pair of angles that we have? Maria? Corresponding. Corresponding. So I've already got them on the board. Corresponding angles, the ones that are... How can you tell they're corresponding? What makes them correspond? Yeah, Nikhil. Because they're on the straight line and they're on the same side as well. Okay, good. On the same side, they're facing the same direction. Do you remember that's the way that I, I said? Just look at which way they're facing. If they're the same way, that's corresponding. What was the next one? Starting with the name. Adjacent. Oh, now, adjacent is a really important word with angles. We, we learnt it at the beginning of this chapter. But on parallel lines, we don't necessarily know that adjacent angles are equal. There's something else I'm looking for. Yeah, that's alternate. Alternate, very good. Uh, it's a bit tricky. We introduce words so that we can be precise with our language, right? But then you get to this problem where there's like, ah, oh, so many words. And adjacent, alternate, they sound very similar, right? Alternate angles are equal. Where are some alternate angles here? Can someone tell me, describe me where I could put one? For example, which one's alternate to A? That's a bit of a sneaky one, yeah. Um, the one next to B. Okay, so this guy here, right? This guy will be facing the opposite direction, and it's on the other side. So these guys, they're alternate, right? Alternate angles, equal. Last one, last one, the one we just looked at um, a second ago. Um, yeah, kind of Commentary. Commentary, very good. Now you can see I have left off the end here as well. Because these are equal and equal, not equal. They are, we used the word just a minute ago. Um, they are supplementary. Very good. Okay. So this is what we have shown over the last few days. Okay. Now we're going to conclude. What's this last sentence about? Okay. What we've got here is a piece of logic. Okay. And I actually want you to put at the top of your page, right next to your heading like I'm about to do. I want you to see this logic. If you've got some statement A and you know that, I'm can say that some statement B is true. Each one of these is an A and a B. So if lines are parallel, if A is true, then B is true. Corresponding angles equal, or alternate angles equal, or any of these, right? So you know this, you can deduce or you can conclude this, okay? Now, what I'm going to say down the bottom here, um, what I'd like you to all write down together, I'm going to introduce a new word for you. It's not a shoe or clothing brand. It needs something else for us. The converse is also true. Now, what is a converse? Um, this diagram that I've asked you to draw up here with the statements will help us, right? The converse is when you take these statements and you turn them around. You reverse the direction, okay? The converse of this would be this. If B, then A. Okay. And you've got to be careful. In mathematics, as in real life, converses are always true. For instance, I could say, um, you know, uh, I, have a, I have a square. If a shape is a square, then it's also a rectangle. Do you agree with that? Like every, all of them are 90 degrees, so that's what makes a rectangle a rectangle. So if my shape is a square, then it's also a rectangle. You can hear my if something, then something else. What would the converse of that statement be? Rather than if it's a square, then it's also a rectangle. What would the converse be? Yeah. If it's a rectangle, it's also a square. So if I reverse these and say it, if it's a rectangle, then it's a square, obviously that's not true anymore, is it? Right? The converse often is not the case. Okay? But here in parallel lines, and we're going to show it in a second, in parallel lines, the converse is true. If you know any one of these on a pair of parallel lines, then you can say that. If you see alternate angles on a pair of lines and they're equal, that means you conclude they're also parallel. If you see co-interior angles and they, when you look at them, they add up to 180 degrees, then you can conclude the lines are parallel. Okay? So here's an example on the right-hand side. Would you use a ruler uh, and draw up that diagram? It doesn't have to be too big. Would anyone like to borrow a ruler? Can you come out the front and grab one? I'll just leave it here. So what we're going to do is we are going to prove that a pair of lines are parallel. And there's not too much to it. You can see here I've got some labels. I can see 
angle A Q R. Right? You can read its size there, right? It's labeled as 75 degrees. Yeah? And I hope it looks roughly 75 degrees. I notice that it is also equal to the same size. It's equal to DRQ. Do you see that? Now, just like in um, the past few lessons, every time you make a statement, you want to back it up with a reason. You want to show why. I'm not just plucking this out of thin air. It's not a magical statement. It's got a reason. Okay. The reason is, on my diagram, both are measured with the same angle. They're both equal to 75 degrees. Okay. So if they're both the same size, that means the angles themselves are equal. Okay. Now I'm going to say, what? Angle AQR and angle DRQ are not just random angles here, right? They are related in a particular way. Which relationship do they have out of this set of three? Which one are they? Hmm, yeah, right. Alternate. They're alternate, fantastic. And the way you can see is they face in opposite directions, right? So I'm going to say, hey, they're not just equal, they are alternate angles. So if I put those two pieces of information together, that's this statement here. Alternate angles are equal, so I can conclude this, right? Therefore, A, B is, you remember our symbol for parallel lines, which are two parallel lines, okay? A, B is parallel to C, D because alternate angles are equal. So you can see, if you have a look at our review questions, right? Our logic is similar, but it's going in the other direction. Here, you know the lines are parallel, so you say something about the angles. Here, you know something about the angles, so you can say the lines are parallel. Does that make sense? Okay, so here is, um, oh, I should label it. Here's example two. Have a look. What kind of relationship do I have between the two angles that you actually know something about. What kinds of angles are they? Yes. Co they're co-interior. And you can see, because they're both on the inside of that pair of parallel lines. You can see that backwards C happening, right? We've talked about angles before. Now, when you have a look at these, what I'm expecting co-interior angles to do is to add up to 180. That's what I'm kind of expecting. Do they add up to 180? What do they add up to? They, they don't do that, they add it to 190. So what I'm going to say is, angle, what are our names here? Uh, M, I, J, plus angle, what do you want to call the other one? How about O, G, is that okay? <laughs> angle O, J, I, that's the smaller one in here. Right? It's equal to 110 degrees plus 80 degrees. And like we just saw, that's 190. Now, I'm not that interested in what's equal to, what I'm interested in is what it's not equal to. It's not equal to 180 degrees. Okay? But, as Kimmy just mentioned, these are not random angles, these are co interior angles, right? M I J and O J I are co interior. So, what conclusion can I draw from this? Right? I didn't get the 180 degrees that I was kind of hoping for. Right? So what does that mean about the two lines? Are they parallel? Oh. Are they parallel? Yeah. They can't be parallel with the angle because that makes no sense otherwise. Very good. They can't possibly be parallel because if they were, then they should add up to 180. But they don't. They don't, right? So since this converse thing is happening, if I prove that they're not 180, then they're not going to be parallel. Yeah. Yes, well, um, you might have noticed I didn't put arrows here either. We didn't know, right? But I proved that now we actually can put the arrows on, right? In this case, you know what? They look pretty close to parallel, don't they? They look quite close. But we have shown by using this logic here that they, they can't possibly be. So I'm going to conclude that, right? Therefore, what are they called? MN and OP are not parallel. And the reason, again, has to do with this, right? The co interior angles are not supplementary. They're not supplementary, so it's the reverse. Okay, full stop.
So you can see now, this is kind of the conclusion, right? We know lots of different things. We can find answers if we want, or given answers, we can apply logic to make conclusions about what these lines are and how they're related to each other. Okay?